I started making this video so many times, every time something changed. But I'm glad that I waited so long because the firmware 3.0 came out and I had enough time to test the camera after its release. My name is Andre Dima, I'm a professional travel photographer and video maker and I've been using the Fujifilm X-H2S for my projects since it came out and today I'm going to review it again. I reviewed this camera when it came out and I said it's a new beginning for Fujifilm. I loved the camera then and I love it even more now. It has been a slow beginning, but I think by the end of the year all is going to be well on the Fuji front. I also use the Fujifilm X-T5 so I'm going to compare it a bit with that. This is becoming my favorite travel combo. I'm going to be quick about build quality, it reminds me of my Nikon D850, tough not to crack. It fits well in the hand just like that. I find it better built than my Nikon Z7 II. The joystick is in a position I used for so long on Nikon cameras, so I love it. I like that you can light the top display. Everything feels well put together, like it should on a pro level camera. The weather ceiling did its job in all the conditions I put it through. The buttons function properly. The display and its hinge have, again, no problems. I find the display detailed enough, bright enough and color accurate. Yes, it is better built than the X-T5. The dial feels better than the ones on the X-T5. The buttons, well, all of it. The X-T5 is not badly built, but when you go from one camera to the other, you can feel the difference. Regarding the dial, I think Fujifilm made the right choice for the XH line to not add retro dials, so they could attract more professionals from other brands that prefer this type of controls. I love the retro dials and I can use them as fast as I use the PASM dial. That is why I have the X-T5, but having the C1 to C7 manual controls on the X-H2S makes it a joy to use. I know that you cannot press the back dial to zoom like on other models or custom it to your needs, but I'm okay with that if the camera is more durable. You can use another function button for that. Regarding the back dial, here is my first complaint. And please Fuji fix this or just give us a reason why we cannot use the back dial to change ISO. I use this dial on all cameras and I find it very useful, but on the X-H2 cameras you cannot do it and it is a bit frustrating. I saw some people complaining about the ISO button. You need to press it just once change the ISO and then you can press the shutter to close the menu and use the camera. You don't need to press the ISO button, then change the ISO, then press again the ISO button and then the shutter. Cards. I know everyone talked about this before, but I wish this camera had dual CF Express Type B cards because if you use the SD cards as a backup, no matter how fast it is, it slows you down and the CF Express Type-B cards are essential for this camera to unlock Apple ProRes video and to shoot at 40 frames per second without problems. Also to clear the cache fast because shooting at 40 frames per second means a lot of photos. The fact that the Fujifilm X-H2S has a normal HDMI port makes me so happy, but also makes me sad when I think about the X-T5. But I get it, that is the more photocentric camera. But what would the X-Pro4 be? A photos only camera? That would be nice, titanium body, slick design, 40 megapixels, no video, a decent price, dreams, but who knows? Ok, back to the X-H2S, it has a beautiful design, it looks better than any camera with a PASM dial. If you look long enough at it, you will find small details that make it stand out. People don't mention this, but it is a good looking camera. And those strap holes integrated in the body, all cameras should have that. Battery life is great, I know that it is the same battery as the X-T4, but Fujifilm optimized this camera better for power consumption. And the final part of the puzzle, the EVF, IMAX in your camera. 
color accurate, tons of frame rates to choose from, it's just gorgeous and I miss it so much when I go back to the X-T5. Yes, there are still people using the EVF and not just the back screen. The image quality, like all Fujifilm cameras, is great, 26 megapixels is more than enough for anything, even big printing. The dynamic range is good but not as good as the X-T5s. The X-H2S is slightly better in low light than the X-H2 and X-T5. Well, here is my favorite part, the stacked sensor. Not many people talk about this, but I use the electronic shutter 90% of the time with this camera because it is not affected by normal sensor problems, because it has a fast readout speed. You actually have a camera that can take infinite photos, and the mechanical shutter is rated for 500,000 actuations. Remember when this mattered? Does the price now look so high? I know the electronic shutter gives you less dynamic range than the mechanical shutter, but the difference is very small. I use this camera with so many lenses from Fujifilm to Sigma and Tamron and it was blazing fast with all of them when it comes to photography. You can feel it is faster than the X-T5. I think the auto white balance options are more accurate than previous generations. Everything works better and I like the colors more on this than the X-Trans 4 cameras. Now let's talk about video. Man, does this camera have a lot of options for video. All you need is space, from its amazing F-Log2 to the H.265 10-bit 422 options, this camera gives you beautiful footage every time. The 14 plus stops of dynamic range with the F-Log2 are just insane to have on a camera that costs only $2,500. Not to mention you can shoot all of this in ProRes HQ so you have data to push the files as much as you need. You can shoot 4K60 with no crop and you also have the option to shoot 4K 120. You can shoot 6.2K open gate, the 3x2 aspect ratio is getting more and more popular for movies, documentaries and music videos. Not to mention it is great to have if you want to crop or use anamorphic lenses. The low light performance is great, the noise on Fujifilm cameras for video and photo looks different than other cameras, more organic, so it is pleasing to the eye but this camera performs very well until ISO 6400. Put the right lenses on this camera and you will never have a problem with noise. One of my favorite cine lenses I used with the X-H2S is the 7 Artisans 25mm T1.05. It has a beautiful character and it is great in low light. The Viltrox 13mm f1.4 is, as I said multiple times on this channel, amazing and it works perfectly with this camera. And the Fujifilm 16mm f2.8, a new discovery of mine. This lens is very good for video, the autofocus works better than most Fuji lenses and it is super light. Rig this up and you have a cinema camera. Yes, it needs more tools like waveforms, but I don't miss those when I use an external display. This camera can also shoot RAW with an external recorder. Ok, let's get to the autofocus and annoy some people. I use the X-T4 for jobs with no problems, photo and video, and that had big problems with the autofocus. The autofocus on the Fujifilm X-H2S is super close to the competition, possibly with the next firmware update they will get there. The thing is, I tested it with the Viltrox 13mm for vlogging and it never lost me, again in low light it worked perfectly. Now if you use this camera in the real world, you will not be disappointed by the video autofocus. If you compare it with the competition in some absurd tests, yes, sometimes it will fail. The autofocus on the X-H2S is very good for any application, photo or video, if you use the right lens. This is where Fujifilm needs to improve when it comes to video. 
My favorite autofocus lenses for video are the Tamron 17-70mm f2.8 and Viltrox 13mm f1.4. And recently the Fuji 16mm f2.8. I used the 23mm LMWR recently because I am thinking of buying one and the autofocus was not as good as the one on the lenses I mentioned earlier. And I think the autofocus is going to be improved more and more over time. Ok, so I live in Valencia, Spain. Heat and humidity here are a problem, but I never had an overheating issue when recording video. I also traveled to the south of Spain last summer with this camera and again I never had an overheating issue and I shot a lot of 6.2K in ProRes at temperatures of 40 Celsius. When it comes to photography, tracking works very well. The hit rate improved after firmware 3.0 as you can see in my tests here. Fujifilm started slow with this generation but I think if they work more on firmware updates this year, they will catch up with the competition. Not everyone needs or wants a full frame camera. Ok, now let's talk about IBIS because I think they need to improve or change their algorithm. It is great for photography but not that great for video because it acts in video just like in photo and that makes it fight you when you use the camera. It is not bad but I think they should make the IBIS work differently for video. The IBIS is not bad but it can be a lot better in video. I hope they are working on this. The Fujifilm X-H2S is an incredible machine, a do-it-all camera and I am glad I bought it. And I am so curious how it is going to evolve in time. From its amazing stacked sensor to all video options and 14 plus stops of dynamic range in F-Log2, to its great build quality, the Fujifilm X-H2S is a great achievement for Fujifilm and the camera industry. If this video was helpful, please subscribe and use the links in the description to support the channel. See you next time.